Uh, all right, guys. So I wanted to take this opportunity to discuss the recently announced World of Warships developer blog post. Uh, those of you who are watching, some of you have already referenced some of it, and uh, I think this is cool. And uh, first up, we've got a super battleship. This is going to be the in the same team design as the Edgar, for example, or the other super battleships that have existed the uh, sent uh, was it uh, yeah Satsume and the German battleship design this one is rockin 12 431 millimeter guns on a three gun turret spe uh, setup so this is going to probably combine design from the Alsace and the Republique so those two ships will sort of combine into this early 50s era weaponry which is, you know, I think that I don't like the concept of super ships because I feel like it's a way for people to not get anything for playing the game. I wish the economy was more in line with like a tier 11 instead of like a tier, you know. I understand that there, the economy for World of Warships is deliberately nicer than World of Tanks, for example. And I think that's because they felt like there was less of an audience. But I think the game speaks for itself. And I wish that these were more tier 11s instead of... You basically are just going to lose a lot of money when you run them because they're powerful. And I get that. But you don't need something like this. Uh, but they're going to be offering a French super battleship. Um, how do you say that? Patriot? So maybe Patriot. French Patriot. Uh, so this is um, 12, 431. So it will have 30 millimeter overmatch. It will have probably really strong AA defense, I would guess. Um, in keeping with French battleship design, it'll have good speed. It'll be very hard to citadel. Uh, it will have extra maneuvering with engine boost. And its unique passive is going to be, well, activatable passive is going to be this combat instruction. So when you generate your combat instruction, you can activate it and your ship will go 7% faster. The high explosive shells will get 90% improved penetration. So nearly doubling. Notice that there is no penetration increase for AP though. And then main caliber gun Reload is improved by 20%. The action time of this effect will be 50 seconds. So you might imagine this will affect three to five salvos from your main battery. Supposedly, this is a fast firing gun, right? Well, let's uh, take a look at the main battery reload. 28 seconds is not fast firing. Okay, I just want to say that is not fast firing to me. Fast firing is like 26. 28 is not fast. So 20%. This will make it fire three salvos. Yeah, basically three salvos when it would fire two. You have to fire, you have to have gunshots. You have to have 12 gunshots. So this should generate. Is it really saying that you can generate this? So each gun turret counts as one, two, three. So every time you fire, so four salvos, every four salvos, you can get combat instruction, basically, which is the unique French super battleship pass. Eh. I mean, I think that the combat instruction is interesting. I want to see the AT penetration. Like, okay, what could I use the AT penetration for? 90% of it. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, let's take a look at the Republic because it has the 431. So these guns are basically going to be what it's like equipped with. It just gets four more, which is nice. Uh, so its base penetration is 72. So it's going to jump up to like 130. One, 120, 130. Um, is that a notable threshold for cruiser outward citadel? Like is something, is 130 even like, does that mean anything? No, there's no outward citadel there. No outward citadel there. It's got to be only light cruisers. So... Nevsky, do you have a light a, a citadel on the outside? You do. Oh, 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 this could be really close. And with IFHE, wow, uh, that would be an interesting matchup. Because from any angle, if you can pin this with high explosive, it will citadel it. Uh, now, it's not going to like kill it like as much as you would hope. Uh, it's not that power, but it is it is an interesting effect that wasn't possible before. So, yeah. Instead of the shell doing 33% of 6,300, it's going to do 6,300 on the side of Alex Alexander Nevsky. So, you know, that's, hey, at some point in the future, maybe that means something. These super ships, I have no idea what they intend to do with them. If they're going to be 
add it as a, a tier 11 or are they going to go further than that? I, I don't know what they plan to do with them. Honestly, I have sort of refused to use them because I don't agree with the economy. The economy is just designed to rob you of everything and you don't need to be robbed. You can play tier 10s, which are already very expensive, by the way, to play constantly. Um, but you can play tier 10s and you can at least make back in a good game. You can make some, uh, some funds from it. In a poor game, you'll obviously lose money. But it, if you play right in a tier 10 with a premium camo or something like that, that's, you know, that's what it Well, it will obviously work with AP as well. That's that's the thing that you need to obviously take home. This is a main battery reload effect for a French super battleship. That's not a surprise at all. Not to anyone. Not at all. So I think that because this is... Mighty Wild Bad, thank you for that interruption, my friend. Thank you for the 31 months. <laughs> uh, the Tauntaun's body, of course. Uh, anyway, so like the French super battleship. Interesting that it's going to get main battery reload. I do think that I would hope that the plus of this happening... Maybe this will get more conversation discussing French battleships in general right now. Because I feel like they're in a really bad spot, generally speaking. They just don't offer anything outside of the main battery reload variants. And, you know, I guess that's enough. Is that is it is it enough that the Burgon is the pretty much the only tier 10? Well, the Burgon and the uh, Jean Bar. Both of those ships are basically the only French battleships that are relevant in any meaningful way. Unfortunately, I feel like time has not worn. Uh, the amount of 32 proliferated everywhere is really apparent. So, you know, there's, I just have concerns over the French battleship line. So if uh, quite honestly, I'm glad that there is something that's coming down the pike that is French related. Yeah, none of them have main battery reload. I don't know if they deserve it. I just think that obviously that is a notable French trait that would instantly make them relevant in every matchup because you would have to consider that. All right. Uh, so the other things I wanted to talk about real fast um, is changes to test ships and submarines. This is interesting because there is a couple changes here. The Hornet is getting nerfed. And based on what I've seen in the CC chat, it deserves it. It's very strong. I think the nerf is appropriate. I haven't played with it because obviously I just do these on this. So yeah, I, you know, stream and make videos. Uh, so I don't have time off stream to play this stuff. Uh, but Hornet's getting a huge nerf. I mean, I, it, it seems to be overperforming based on what I've seen. Uh, so yeah, uh, based on what I've seen, it's way too good. For the Maya, I haven't really played with the Maya um it's a cruiser a japanese tier 7 cruiser they just reduce the shell damage and they increase the reload time oh gosh going from 15 to 16 that's just that's just pretty awful uh it just makes it even longer and i'm just like i'm just trying to envision maybe the selling point would probably be for launching torpedoes is the maya even in my inventory so i can talk about this i'm just taking a look at this this is a in-game reference okay so the maya yeah so the maya looks like it is a tier 7 um otago so its torpedo systems are midship Okay, okay. So they probably felt like it was overperforming because it's actually a good Japanese cruiser with forward launching torpedoes. This is what they need to do. They need to find a reason to introduce this along the entire Japanese fleet line because there is no excuse for the Japanese cruisers not being relevant, but they are not relevant. And it's partially because you can't use their torpedoes. It's really infuriating um, unless you're in a defensive position. But these are obviously midship with the Maya. So yeah, they're nerfing the gun performance, maybe because the torpedo performance is so high. Ah, uh, you know, uh, the Atlantico is getting another nerf, <laughs> which of course sucks for Atlantico. Uh, I was hoping that they would go back to the previous design with Hydro, but I don't know that they're doing that. I'm not really in it. I haven't played it. This is going to be the dockyard ship, though. And so I have concerns that they're nerfing the dockyard ship so much. I just don't see it performing as well as they do. But maybe I need to play it off stream and really get an understanding. Uh, G.I. Joe, the Atlantic Coast dockyard, what they're doing. Uh, research for uh, the tier 
five through eight Italian destroyers, their exhaust smoke parameters have changed. They get three charges, they have a cooldown time of 90 seconds, and they have an action time of 25 seconds. Um, hmm. What do I think of this? This is an interesting one. The, as you know, the Italian DDs are coming out soon. And they are offering this unique game mechanic with the exhaust smoke, obviously. So the exhaust smoke is basically them playing in a reverse and uh, to the in the vision game. And they reduce their gun range accordingly. At early tier, they also get exhaust smoke. So compared to what is available, the change is they get one less exhaust smoke and it lasts for five seconds less. That's a very small change. Uh, that'll just mean that you can't be as aggressive from tiers five, six, and seven with the Italian DDs. Uh, but there are pluses and minuses to everything. The consumable action time being reduced means that your vision reduction will not stay as long. Yeah, I think that just one less charge. The charge is honestly a bigger deal than the five second change. The five second change to me is okay at tiers five through eight because the gameplay is so lower. It's just slower than tier 10. So I don't think that it's a big reduction, but the uh, reduced consumable, that's a big hit. That's a big hit. And you can obviously use superintendent and get it back, but going from four to three, that's 25%. It just reduces your aggressiveness a lot. So yeah, it basically means that they might need to invest in superintendent. You know, and then uh, the Italians are very different though. The Italian DD line is completely different and it's obviously something that needs to be played or seen for yourself. Uh, now, they're also reducing the torpedo reload rate at early tiers. Uh, the torpedoes are they're super slow. They're just sea mines, basically. So at early tier, they just you send them out on cooldown and you just flood the water and see what sticks. They obviously don't like that gameplay, so they're nerfing that. Uh, the Magist the Magistrale, they're... Oh. So the main battery reload of the tier 5 is being buffed. Tier 6, 7, and 8 are being nerfed in their reload. The action time of the engine power is being reduced and the charges are being reduced at tiers. Oh, they're taking away, what? This is weird. The tier five is getting better guns. The emergency engine power is being nerfed and it's losing a charge. But then at the tier six slot, the gun reload is being nerfed. The engine power is being buffed and the engine power consumable is going up from four to six. Wow. Okay, so I guess the expectation would be that they would rely more on active dodging and less on their smoke at these tier. And I and the tier five just goes against that rule for whatever reason. Uh, all submarines are getting a flood nerf. They take more damage from flood damage. Hmm, okay, that's fair. And they're getting a dive capacity reduction across the board, huge nerfs. And the uh, recharge rate of the Germans is going down. Wow, okay, so they're making the, okay. So the Germans will have a longer dive capacity, but it will still be nerfed compared to what they had. Uh, and then their dive capacity, though, will recharge at a slower rate compared to that of the Americans. So the American trait will be that their, their dive capacity recharges at twice the rate. So maybe they're more into staying on the surface and going back down, whereas the Germans would be... Uh, more cautious going down, staying on the surface until they absolutely have to go down, maybe. Uh, interesting changes across the board, though, for the Italian DDs, uh, but that's not all. Uh, there is a new aircraft detection mechanic that they are in the early stages of testing. Uh, the last time that they talked about this topic, there was a topic, uh, it was a radio concept. Uh, they are sharing details about another new mechanic that they are maybe developing. So... This is all testing. This is a proof of concept. This is not in a showable state, so we're not going to see some footage of it. Uh, but this is them trying to figure out a successful mechanic that they can introduce into the aircraft that will reduce their global spotting, but increase their direct control over their spotting ability design. Uh, the new concept is that the, airpla the airplane squadron will be is going to be directly controlled by a player will have a limited cone of view with when with uh within which enemy ships can be spotted 
and info about their positions shared with the entire team. Uh, the enemy ships outside of this field of view will not be visible unless their AA is firing at the squadron. So the suggestion here is that anywhere from such and such degree, 82, 110, or whatever in front of your viewing position, you can see normal spotting distance. Um, but planes can only detect ships that are closer than 10 kilometers. Keep that in mind. Uh, so that's slightly different than the design because what they're going to be doing is they're going to be making the ship's base detectability range by air equal to the sea. So there, it basically will only be one detectability range for every single vessel in the game. It will be the same as your surface detection. Um, but everything else uh, would be in the design would still exist, you know, like the, the same detection for submarines, the same detection, as long as the ship would exist in front of the aircraft within 10 kilometers, that aircraft could communicate it back to their teammates. So it's going from full 360 global detection and unlimited range, basically, to a conal 10 kilometer detection and I don't know if the radio concept is still in effect. Um, maybe it's not. So in that in that way, if the radio effect is not in, in effect, you know, they, they scrap the radio and they go with this concept. What does this ultimately do to the aircraft carrier's ability to play the game? Well, from their point of view, everything will probably look the same, quite honestly. Uh, there might be an area of their field of view that indicates that they are spotting for their team. But from their point of view, they could probably see ships to fly to that are within 10. They couldn't report back the the, the, air, the ships behind their field of view within 10 kilometers. Those ships wouldn't go back to their teammates. The only ships that would go back to their teammates are the aircraft carriers, um, the ships that are directly forward of the aircraft within 10 kilometers of it. So the radio concept is basically dead. There's no limitation to the range of report, um, but there is a limitation to the amount of information that can be uh, shared at any given moment, because obviously there's a huge difference between 360 degree detection and a conal detection bubble. That would influence the location that you decide to fly. Uh, you could see aircraft sort of scanning that might be an interesting thing to introduce. Give them a reason to do like a scan pattern, like they're looking for some, hmm. I think that they could easily make the carrier more of a detection, like reward the detection more by giving them more XP, but make the detection overall less uh, effect on the game by reducing it globally around them. That would be, you know, it would honestly be killing two birds with one stone because you would introduce a reason for the carrier to spend more time gathering intel, but you would reduce the overall intel that they gather just inherently. Kind of a genius play. So hopefully they can try and introduce a lot of XP incentive uh, incentive maybe there's a ribbon that's generated when an aircraft fulfills this role so i mean global spotting would be killed off by this design which is great and it would be all on the player's design uh are they thinking about reducing the server load oh i mean this will this will just reduce the amount of ships that are inherently globally spotted uh i do like the change of combining the detectabilities into one i do think that the ui while I understand what they're suggesting, it actually doesn't make sense because if you are up, you should get better vision on the subject matter, not worse. It's actually reverse what it should actually be. It should be harder for you as the aircraft. It should be harder for the ship to see other ships and it should be easier for the aircraft to see other everything. But I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to do, you know, create gameplay by them reducing the, making it the detectability one-to-one. -one. What effect does that have on the ship, the game as a whole? If you turn your AA off, you won't be detected by air. Um, for battleships, this basically makes them even easier to spot, but with the limitation of 10 kilometers, it's easier 
for the battleship to really avoid being passively spotted. So honestly, I think that with the limitation introduction, I think that will be the single greatest thing for battleships. 10 kilometer range is definitely, as far as the design of the game, God, I just forgot the thought. Obviously, combining the detection, the DD is the one that would change a lot. It would be a lot harder for the aircraft to accidentally fly into AA. That's true. So this would be an, and this would be a, well, huh, interesting. So if they were to change the detection, the effect on the battleship would basically be the same effect. They would just be spotted the same. It would be easy, but with this reduction in the global view, even with the conal, I think the battleship's just going to be fine. Aircraft carrier, obviously the same rules apply, blah, blah, blah. Where this change could lead to drastic adjustments is the cruiser and the DD matchup. Because this basically makes it to where not a single cruiser could ever ambush an aircraft carrier squadron. Like, ever. There would be not a single moment that it would be an accident, for example, that uh, the aircraft flew over the the uh, cruiser's AA range. Because it would, obviously, you think about the uh, Minotaur, the Minotaur or the Minotaur. Its detection is like nine or eight something. It obviously doesn't have a point whatever AA range. So that is going to mean that the, the ship will be detected before its AA even activates. And those are ships that rely on ambush AA to really... Because you need that flak burst, and it needs to be like an instant pop, you know? So that is a huge, huge nerf to the cruiser. For the DD, um, it's not as big of a nerf for the DD, admittedly. It is a nerf, but it is not as big, because normally the DD maintains detection, let's basically one-to-one -one with its a with the, uh, with the ship's detection. Some, it might be a nerf, uh... Ragnar, for example, you would get like a kilometer of detection warning when you wouldn't normally get that. But on other ships, it would be exactly the same range. The, you know, and if you turned your AA off, I mean, for detection, it would make it easier. But you got to remember, if the aircraft is flying at you, he has to be within six kilometers of your ship and he has to be facing you. So at that point, it really should be your AA should be turned on. So this is really just giving the DDs the last little punch in the back because you really should be ambushing the in a safe environment. Uh, so to me, this is really forcing the DD to change, to be smart and not dumb. So I think that that's a, a net gain there. But for the cruiser... That is a monster, monster nerf in the cruiser. I don't know what to say. I feel like the cruiser is the last class that needs a nerf. They need something. <laughs> the cruiser is literally the last class that needed a nerf. And it's definitely a nerf. Without a doubt, a nerf for the cruiser. You know, for the battleship, and even for the DD, not really a global nerf. It's not a global buff, but it's not really a global nerf because of the mechanical changes. But the cruiser sits right smack in this window where his air detection already was right at 10 kilometers in a worst case scenario. So he doesn't stand to gain anything from this change. Uh, the only change he gets is the field of view change. His AA ambush is literally killed off. It's literally dead AA ambush from a cruiser. Um, so like, that's a huge deal. Um, and the reason why I think it's a, it's, it's not really a DD nerf because truthfully, a DD should be taking advantage of its flak burst bubble. If the DD is not under direct threat, the DD should be sailing with its AA turned on period. If the DD is sailing with its, its AA turned off, he is wasting opportunity that he can contribute in the matchup. So this is, f this is forcing the DD to make a change so that uh, this is forcing a change on DD players that refuse to change with time. This was something that changed with the uh, update to the priorities uh, target. The way it was designed, uh, DDs benefit the most from defensive AA and their and their their A design when their A is turned on when the uh, flies over their long range AA by turning it off and only having it on. 
at your continuous, you are literally guaranteeing that the aircraft carrier would have no, con you would have no contribution in stopping the carrier. Now, it does have the benefit of keeping you undetected. You also need to actually contribute to the game. You can't just always be undetected. You know, I really don't like DD players that turn their A, their A off and they never do anything. They go, they don't go for objectives. They just constantly send torpedoes on cooldown and they never fire their gun. I'm, I'm so done with that, like that passive DD play. So I'm glad that they, they're forcing the DD. There is literally no reason why you shouldn't turn your AA on unless you are in some type of they they say that um why wouldn't you turn your AA on if you are already globally spotted well you would turn your AA off if the aircraft is flying away from you that's when you would turn your AA off you are only spotted if your AA is on and the aircraft is if your AA is on because the aircraft's conal vision is the only thing that it is detecting so it's going to turn your AA into if the aircraft is flying away, then you would turn your AA off so that you aren't spotted in that instant. But for the initial ambush, the ambush of flak burst is the biggest deal for DDs. No, 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 no. Flak burst is the way that a, a DD deals with. Because they turn their AA off, they have basically removed themselves from it. I've played plenty of a, uh, DDs. I've had plenty of success in reducing and mitigating the aircraft carrier. And it comes from maintaining the same exact play style that I, I uh, said. You keep your AA on for the ambush and you turn it off if the uh, situation is not your advantage. But you don't globally sail around with AA turned off. That's just dumb. That's just, that's dead. That gameplay is dead. Sorry. So this is, this is killing it for the DD. So long. Didn't miss you. I was so disappointed by so many DDs who would fail with their AA turned off and they wouldn't contribute. And I know that they would be in range, but they, they didn't want to be detected. Yeah. Okay. I, so I'm glad that the DD is being encouraged to contribute in the air game. I'm also glad that the battleship basically doesn't have any change with this design because uh the 10 kilometer actually is the biggest single improvement this will reduce detection more than anything so everything else doesn't matter but cruisers man cruisers are getting butchered by this you can't do this to the cruiser without compensation there needs to be another thing that the cruiser does well it, it can't it can't be like this this can't be because you're basically saying hey cruisers you're never going to ambush any cv player ever again you're never, ever, ever going to get that ever again, unless they're, you know, dumb. That just kills a lot of the, like, the value in a cruiser, because the cruiser was the ambush AA specialist, because its AA was, detection was one-to-one -one with its um, AA. So there was no reason to turn it off. So everyone got to see firsthand what flak burst does to the CV matchup, and especially flak burst against, like, um, FDR. FDR needs to be directly countered by flak burst. So I'm hoping that this will evolve it. I just, I just, I'm disappointed by the cruiser nerf. It's just way too big. There needs to be more. There needs to be way more for the cruiser. Very sad for the cruiser. Um, but let's turn that frown upside down because we are getting a tier eight Italian cruise aircraft carrier. That aircraft carrier, the Aquila. Uh, this was initially laid down but never finished in 1943 because of the uh, work was stopped in 1943. Um, so this was never actually commissioned, but it is fun to consider. Maybe it did. I like that. Um, we'll take a look at what they're doing, but it comes with only two types of squadrons, attack, attack aircraft, and a torpedo bomber. So no dive bomber whatsoever. So what does that mean? The planes have low hit points and relatively high speed. Hmm. So each squadron of attack aircraft has a large number of planes divided into two attacking flights, and it is equipped with accurate armor-piercing rockets. Uh, while the rockets deal low damage individually, a well-executed strike can deal good damage to a target. The aerial torpedoes enjoy a high base damage, and the aerial torpedoes are very slow. That's also... Uh, they are also making a Tier 8 Atlanta um, named San Diego. <laughs> Uh, San Diego, uh, during the ship's 43-44 refit, it, uh, 
supposedly got reinforced. That's sort of a, it's a what if San Diego, what if tier eight. And um, it's going to be like the Austin though. It's going to have main battery reload. It's going to have sap, hydroacoustic, defensive. So this will be interesting. So it'll be an Austin-like experience, but not steel-worthy. Uh, San Diego has low hit points, obviously good concealment. Uh, it doesn't have radar, unlike the Atlanta. So this is much more like an Austin. It's just a Tier 8 Austin. So if we look at the characteristics of the aircraft... <laughs> yeah, I was doing Anchorman, of course. <laughs> uh, so we've got a 19mm bow. Ugh, that's going to be easy to punch right through. It sticks out like a sore thumb. So on the front, yeah, you're going to go for that bow, man. Definitely go for the bow. Don't go for the um, the deck. The deck will have ungodly amount of armor, I'm sure. Uh, the secondary battery, yeah, it's okay. Short range secondary. Uh, speed, 30 knots. Turning radius, 950 meter. Rudder shift, 12.9 seconds. Okay, fast rudder. Surface detection, 13.9. Air detection right now is 11. But remember... With the uh, testing that they're doing, they might combine this into one detection. Um, so that would mean that its air detection right now is 11. But by the time that the ship comes out, or maybe a couple patches after, they could change that. And it would make its de facto air and surface detection 13.9. Just food for thought. Uh, damage control and then fighter is its available consumables. Uh, the attack rocket has AP bombs. It has 24. <laughs> wow. Each squadron has, oh, it has 24 on deck. The attacking flight is five and it has two attacking flights in a squadron. So torpedo bomber per squadron. Size of the attacking flight, no. So two attacking aircraft and then the squadron is four. It has eight. So there's four separate attacks that you can make with the torpedoes. They have a 10 kilometer range torpedoes. Jeez. Oh, that's detectability. Sorry. Uh, the torpedo range is actually 3.5. Sorry. The, <laughs> like, jeez. Uh, torpedoes, lots of damage. Good. They only go 30 knots, but they arm in 400 meters. These air, these torpedo bombers, they will be right on top of you when, uh, they drop their torpedoes. Uh, so that'll be interesting, <laughs> but these torpedoes will move very, very, very slow. And then uh, San Diego, tier 8, 16 millimeters is a light cruiser. Basically, it's the Atlanta with better guns. Uh, it's the Atlanta with, like, basically different consumable. You know, it's a light cruiser. It has limited effectiveness. It's going to get its effectiveness from main battery reload booster and the sap shell, which the sap shell will help out a lot. It does have 36 millimeters of penetration on the sap shell. You can penetrate the bow and stern of battleships, but not the American deck armor. And then its HE base pen is 21 millimeters. You may or may not want to invest in IFHE at tier 8. Uh, 21 would go Hi, no to How <laughs> Don. I'm doing great. Thank you for the support, Don. Uh, I'm doing wonderful. I'm enjoying the dev blog discussion. So high explosive shell penetration going from 21 to 25, probably. 26, actually. 26 millimeters. I mean, there's definitely significant thresholds that you can cross, but you do have sap and sap is kind of high explosive light. So, you know, I probably wouldn't invest in IFHE because it does have sap. But then again, I might because I just don't know. I haven't played the Austin with that sort of design. Interesting design for the Italians. Obviously, we've never seen Italian aircraft carriers, so it'll be the first in the game. Uh, and then what else was it? We had closed testing. Was that all of the dev blog? Yeah. So lots of dev blog to discuss. The air detection concept change is very fascinating. I like it. I'm, I think that the cruiser needs a new identity, quite honestly. Um, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe you make the cruiser AA open up at 10 kilometers, you know, just do it. Uh, I don't, I don't know what they'll do for cruisers. I'm really, I'm really concerned for the cruiser. Uh, between this and the commander skill tree and just the, the lack of cruiser play in general being very high, um, the class is almost losing its identity and slower and slower. It is becoming less and less effective. And um, it's a real shame from someone who really enjoys the cruiser. I just feel like, you know, there's DDs that are better at being AA stoppers now. And they have better concealment for other parts of the game. They don't have a Citadel. Uh, and then you have battleships who have basically taken over the cruiser role uh, by introducing these smaller 
and I'm doing air quotes if you can't tell. You can't, of course. But if you're doing small battleships that are cruiser battle cruisers and they basically have the same concealment as cruisers then they will effectively have the same AA. now they won't have defensive AA completely equipped like the cruiser and maybe that is the saving grace for the cruisers still they could still revolutionize defensive AA and give that deal a reason for existing and it would instantly make them relevant again if they <laughs> Yeah, there's battleships with basically an, an, a, a, a citadel immune, you know, because their citadel is basically impossible to get to. So, yeah, there's – it's tough. I think that the cruiser has to be played active dodge just as the battleship, but even the best active dodge cruiser will take 457. So, 457, the proliferation of 457 really has affected the game, um, but honestly, when the first one was introduced, the dominoes were already – done they were sealed so at that point you just need to give it to all of them so they could now wargaming needs to uh introduce x factor or cruisers that make them relevant again in the meta and the design because their role is basically not going to be the aircraft carrier ambush specialists when they introduce this so literally radar and there are radar dds so like yeah i'm and it's so fascinating to me because um, clan is artificially limited, so there's an overabundance of cruisers. So the funny thing is, people think like the Petro and the Des Moines are overpowered, but the class itself is poor, is weak, right? So those two things can't actually exist at the same moment. You guys know that, right? You can't have a ship be overpowered, but the class itself be weak. Clearly, the class, even the Petro and even the Des Moines, when they get in those matchups, they are ineffective. And those matchups happen a lot more. <laughs> There's basically a 457 in every single game. And so that basically nullifies a huge amount of the cruiser just in that one existence because then it's basically the shell never has to touch your ship. Yeah, that's tough. That's really tough. That's really tough to guarantee. So yeah, I think that they need to introduce some type of unique X factor or the cruiser to solidify the reason why it exists. The battleships and the DDs both are entrenching, encroaching on the cruiser. The battleships obviously outperform in survivability. The DDs outperform in their survivability as well. Literally, the cruiser is stuck in the middle. Uh, it is the weak, juicy... Um, uh, it, the cruiser is the organs of the body where the battleship is your bones and you know the dd is like your skin it's it's really fascinating to me how vulnerable the cruiser is do you honestly feel like the cruiser's consumable loadout makes them valuable i don't think so i think that they don't have enough consumables then if you want to make them like the spellcaster uh, they don't have enough consumables to justify even their slot because it's really, even if you bring like the best cruiser for consumables, you give up so much in your like uh, sustainability and uh, intel gathering and, um, you know, alpha damage and you give up so much to pull a cruiser. They really need to do something about the cruiser. I do think that they are coming to a the right conclusion. They're coming to the conclusion that it should basically attach some type of incentive for the aircraft carrier to invest in their spotting abilities. Oh, I like that. That's what they should be. That's the that's the, that's the whole thing. Because you're an aircraft, you can fly fast. So it's fun. It's fun flying around the map fast. Makes sense. Let's give them a limited way that they can gather intelligence so that they can't at all accidentally gather it. Give them XP based on gathering intelligence. And like, that's a genius way to fix it. Because what that does is it reduces their global effectiveness, but it increases the rewards for being a spotting, uh, investing in spotting. So they will spend more time moving around the map, gathering intelligence, will be getting less intelligence globally. But they themselves will get more from that active action. And I think that that's all we can hope for, really. That's what we want. We want them to invest in the active action of intelligence gathering. And we don't want it to be an all or nothing sort of thing. So I, I'm, I'm curious how many 
charges of this 360 vision that they will give the squadron and how long that will last. That's the thing that could not make this awesome. But I like the idea. I definitely like the conal vision and, you know, basically when the ship is not in conal vision, they're not, they're not drawn at all. No, oh, we'll, you know, we'll have to see where they go with this. I've left my thoughts. I'm sure there's plenty of people who will leave their thoughts on this. As far as I'm concerned, this is really, we're not ready quite yet for this change, but I do appreciate pretty much everything else that's suggested. So that's where I'm at. As far as the super battleship, French battleship, whatever. That's not really what I'm most interested in. I'm most interested in the up-and-coming Italian DDs and the submarines. They seem to be making the Americans the up-down specialists because they will have the recharge rate that the Germans won't have. The Germans will be incentivized to stay on the surface until they absolutely have to go down because they won't be generating dive capacity at near the rate that they used to, and they don't have as much. Um, so... We'll have to see what the uh, submarine changes actually have. Uh, but, you know, the DDs, the Italian DDs, we will know very soon. Next week, basically, early access for them starts. And these are the tiers that we'll be investing in. So everyone will get a chance, whether you watch my content or you invest in early access, to play them and see just what they actually mean.